Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. U2's Bono says why he refuses to work with Trump, it's beyond stupid. Irish rocker Bono Spen U2 hasn't put out a truly great album since 1991, and they have been coasting on their past success ever since then. Nonetheless, arrogant frontman Bono still somehow believes that he is culturally relevant and thus entitled to lecture America's sitting president on what he should not do. Bono, born Paul Hewson, recently reached an all-time personal high in terms of arrogance and deludedness when he decreed in an interview that he was not interested in working with Republican President Donald Trump. Bono never stopped to think about the obvious fact that President Trump has no reason whatsoever for working with Bono, an entertainer, and certainly not devoted a single second as president to wondering whether or not Bono wants to work with him. In an interview with equally irrelevant Rolling Stone, Bono wide that President Trump did not personally intervene to stop the cost-saving measures recently applied to Penn leftist program BEP for, President's emergency plan for AIDS relief. Said narcissistic Bono, I realized I couldn't work with this president whether he wanted to or not, because you can't believe what he says. The singer then said that America under Trump is the bleakest era since Nixon and claimed, it surely undermines the very idea of America, what is going on now? We know some who should know better have tried to piggyback the man's celebrity to get stuff done. They will live to regret it. Do you think Bono needs to stick to singing songs? Todd Starnes crushes race baiting Don Lemon for calling Merry Christmas a racist dog whistle. CNN's Don Lemon often attacks Trump for saying things he thinks are racist dog whistles. So what did Trump say that was offensive this time? Merry Christmas. So let's remember President Trump isn't the only president who says Merry Christmas, President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama said it many, many times. This is a line that we have heard from Donald Trump many, many, so why does he continue? This is a dog whistle to the base because no one ever stopped saying Merry Christmas, said Lemon. Fox News host David Webb and conservative radio host Todd Starnes hit back against Lemon's ridiculous claim. You know, I forgot to bring my dog whistle. I usually have that on my radio show to blow whenever I hear that phrase, joked Webb. So let me say something about Don Lemon and, quite frankly, CNN. Their entire network is a dog whistle for race baiting, anti Trump bigots. I mean, it's 24 7. They really believe that Merry Christmas is a dog whistle. It makes me wonder what they think the words ho, ho, ho would be code for, responded Starnes. I want to go to this idea that Christmas is somehow inclusive. Is that really true? Because you don't hear them talking about how well, Ramadan needs to be more inclusive. This really is not about inclusivity, David. This is about marginalizing Christianity, said Starnes. When President Trump said the words we are gonna start saying Merry Christmas again, what he was trying to tell people was, you know what? I understand the true meaning of Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. That was the message that the president was trying to convey, argued Webb. Secret Service goes after CNN for whining that a truck blocked them from secretly videotaping Trump. CNN attempted to secretly stalk and videotape President Trump playing golf. But then their view got blocked by a big white truck, causing them to immediately jump to conspiracy theories. According to CNN, the truck must have belonged to the Secret Service, attempting to block their view of the president. As the president completed another round at Trump International Golf Club in West Palm Beach, Florida, a large white truck obscured nearby journalists, who were positioned on public property, from getting a shot of Trump on their cameras. When CNN's photojournalist moved his camera, the truck likewise moved, blocking the picture, writes CNN. On Tuesday, 
CNN recorded a shot of the president on the course in West Palm Beach. The network did the same on Saturday and Sunday, shooting the footage through a gap in the hedges while positioned on a public sidewalk, they wrote. Wow creepy! On Wednesday, crews from CNN attempted to record the president on the course, only to be blocked by the vehicle. Cameras for ABC and CBS were also present, writes CNN. The Secret Service responded to CNN's ridiculous claim that they sent a truck to block their shot. The USSS is in the business of protection and investigations not in commissioning vehicles to block the media's view of the president's golf swing, they said in a statement. Newt just predicted what the great political surprise of 2018 will be, Dems are furious. Right now, Democrats are already celebrating in advance the fact that a blue wave will come crashing down on Republican President Donald Trump and his supporters and that they will retake the House and possibly even the Senate as well in the 2018 midterm elections. These are the same people, of course who took it for granted that Democrat Hillary Clinton would coast to victory in the 2016 election and that Democratic Senate candidates would steamroll their conservative opponents. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich recently shared something that liberals clearly will not be happy to hear. In a very bold prediction, Gingrich stated, the great political surprise of 2018 will be the size of the Republican victory. He went on. After members of the elite media have spent two years savaging President Trump, lying about Republican legislation, and reassuring themselves that Republican defeat was inevitable, the size of the GOP victory in 2018 will be an enormous shock. Newt argued that opposition to the Republicans' tax bill will backfire on Democrats. He stated, the American people would be positively surprised and pleased by the degree to which Republicans kept their word and actually put more money in taxpayer pockets. After 10 months of frustration from trying to repeal Obamacare, Republicans have proven they can get big things done. He continued, Democrats who voted against the bill will live to regret it as people look at their family budgets and realize Democrats in the House and Senate wanted Washington bureaucrats to have more money rather than hard-working Americans. The former congressman concluded, if Republicans can learn to tell the truth better than the elite media and Democrats lie, the GOP will win an astonishing victory in 2018. Do you think Newt's prediction about 2018 is correct? Newsweek spreads disgusting fake news about Melania Trump ruining the White House. The mainstream media wants to do whatever it can to make President Trump and his family look like heartless people who want to destroy the environment. A flurry of news articles came out against Melania Trump and they are all horribly misleading. Melania Trump orders removal of near 200-year-old Dree from White House writes Newsweek. Melania Trump orders removal of 200-year-old Dree from White House lawn writes Slate. Melania Trump orders removal of 200-year-old tree, the oldest at the White House, right draw story. Melania Trump orders White House tree from 1800s to be cut down, writes The Independent. From these headlines, you would assume that Melania is just some heartless person who doesn't care about tradition and history or nature. However, the actual truth tells a much different story. The overall architecture and structure of the tree is greatly compromised and the tree is completely dependent on the artificial support. Without the extensive cabling system, the tree would have fallen years ago. Presently, and very concerning, the cabling system is failing on the east trunk, as a cable has pulled through the very thin layer of wood that remains. It is difficult to predict when and how many more will fail, writes CNN. Mrs. Trump personally reviewed the reports from the United States National Arboretum and spoke at length with her staff about exploring every option before making the decision to remove a portion of the magnolia tree. After reviewing the reports, she trusted that every effort had been made to preserve the historic tree and was concerned about the safety of visitors and members of the press who are often standing right in front of the tree during Marine One lifts, said Melania's communications director, Stephanie Grisham.